welcome. Thank you all for coming in. My name is Tom Garz. I'm a professor here in the Department of Slavic and Eurasian Studies. I'm also the director of the Texas Language Center, where my partner in crime, Betsy Brown, mm -hmm. you will be hearing a lot from Probably Betsy if you do lot. go through with going into the program. Betsy will be your first conduit to get the program going. I've been coordinating this program since 1991, so it's been around a long time. The current incarnation at the school, I'll talk a little bit about in a second, that we're uh, affiliated with now has been for 15 years, so it's, we've been around a while. Um, I'm pleased to say. We started the program, I'll give you a quick history, and, and I'd love to hear from, from you all to know who, who you are and specifically where you are in your Russian to see how you'll fit in, in the program should you and you must decide to go. Uh, yes, now that you're here, by the way, the pizza has a drug in it that means you will sign to on the dotted line. So those of you who haven't eaten anything yet, we'll figure another way out <laughs> to get you to go. Um, uh, the, the, the program has had its genesis in right after 9-11, to be blunt and honest. Um, we were concerned that interest in general in study abroad programs was going to tank after, and it did, after the events that kind of changed the shape of the world. Ru the, Russia, all of our Middle Eastern programs, people just started being a little less confident about going to. So we created a program set up at Moscow International University. I'll say more about it in a minute. Um, Moscow International University that could, in a sense, try to make our students feel not just better about their Russian, but feel better about understanding who Russians are and what life in Russia is like. So we created these courses. That we, at the time, I'm, I'm still trying to decide if they're the best way. We call them bridge courses. What they really are are two, you'll get credit if you do the program, five weeks in country in Moscow with something with a couple of side trips, um, really focused on improving whatever level of Russian you've got and specifically being able to use it in the city. So for each week you have five topics that you work on in class and then you have, an, I'll call it an excursion for lack of a better word, an in-country, in-class, outside of the classroom experience with your instructor where you're using the language in, in the real environment to kind of give yourself a chance to see how you, how you feel. Come on in, come on in. Yeah, please join us, please join us. Moscow, Moscow yes. Plus, Moscow. you got it. Have grab some seat. food, yeah, grab some, some water. <laughs> Grab anything you see on the There's table, food. it's all yours. <laughs> I'm just getting started here, so please help yourself. So the, the shape of these courses is different, I hope, from pretty much anything else that we can offer domestically. Obviously, it's immersion. Obviously, it's intensive. You'll, you'll just, I promise you, every student we've ever sent in this program always says, just as I started to feel I was getting my bearings, I was packing to come home. It goes very, very fast. Five weeks is a, seems like a good chunk of time. It's very quick when you're out of country, when you're in a different place. So that said, we try to give you the most immersive experience we can give you in this really short period of time. So let me say a little bit about where, where we are, what, what we do. So you probably already, oh, let me, before, let's, since we now have an, another person, let's go around. Just oh, start here, just go around and come back to this side of who you are. If you can just say kind of who you are, what's your level of Russian is, that is where, what course you're in now. And in a sense, kind of why, why, why study in Moscow? Why do you want to go away? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I'm Melanie. I'm in the first semester of intensive Russian. And I would like to go to Russia because um, it's a cool country. Yeah, it's an yeah, interesting yeah. language, interesting people. Um, I'm all for, I've always wanted to have sort of a, an immersive language experience, and I never really got the chance until right about now. Terrific. Terrific. I hope, yeah, I hope this works out for you so you can join us. Yeah. Please go. I'm Gwendolyn. I am in first year Russian, regular, non intensive. Um, I, would, I would like to go study in Moscow because when the immersion and to see the uh, culture that is there and I'd like to continue Russian because I think it actually helped me with my major um, Which business field aerospace oh yes <laughs> yes in fact when you get you a flash fellowship you go to Baikonur you go up on one of the spaceship thingies yeah. we'll get you to the space station <laughs> it'll all work out <laughs> right yeah, I promise yeah <laughs> <laughs> terrific glad to have you here yeah please um, I'm Samantha I'm in the first semester of intensive 
And uh, I'm actually kind of applying to several programs mm -hmm. in the hopes that one of them will get funded, and this is one of them. Cool. But um, we got, we've got funding. We got that's what we <laughs> We've got funding. Um, so, and I'm an RE major, so it's pretty applicable to my major. Yeah. Um, so just so I can get better at the language as quickly as possible, and nice. experience the culture that I'm like learning in class. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Uh, I'm Jessica. I'm a I'm in second year Russian, and then I'm an IRG major, so it's required. But I also want to immerse myself and experience the culture for myself. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Are you planning to go beyond second year? Are you, yes, you, I am. I, yeah, till uh, I graduate, just to keep it up. Excellent. Good deal. I love. I was one of the people who developed the IRG degree seven years ago. It seems forever, and it was specifically to try to get students into enough language so that they would continue. Mm -hmm to the advanced level, so yay, it's working, good, <laughs> great, yeah. Um, my name is Kate Scott, I am, and I'm, I'm also an IRG, and I'm in um, first year intensive Russian, um, planning on taking it next semester, so <laughs> hopefully yes. it'll be pretty yes. good going into it. Yes. Um, I'm just very curious about Russia, it's, it's a very interesting place mm -hmm. with a very interesting background, and I'm just very excited. Good. Well, you know, if, if the election goes a particular <laughs> way tomorrow, Mr. Putin could be coming to visit at any minute now because he and yeah. one of our candidates are best buddies, apparently. So, <laughs> or not. I'm Hannah. I'm a first year business major. Um, I'm actually half Russian, so, I, oh, I'm in the first year Russian class with Gwendolyn. Um, so I'm actually half Russian, and so taking this Russian class was kind of like a self-interest thing. Like, it's not required for my major. Um, but I like the culture, and I think it's very fascinating. So, like, studying abroad um, kind of gives me a, a part of my dad's culture and what he grew up with. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool for me. Have you ever been before? I haven't. Um, yeah, I haven't. Well, I look forward. I, again, I hope, uh, I, I really hope you all get to do go do this and we have a couple of other people who couldn't make it today there's a concurrent flas mm -hmm. for it which I'll talk a little bit about as well Betsy actually will talk more about some of the funding uh, flas fellowship application uh, kind of boot camp going on now um, and another person who had to go to work so hopefully we're looking at a, at a slightly even bigger group ideally sized I mean we're really getting say a group of about eight to ten that's perfect actually for our purposes there we usually run somewhere between 12 and 15 and that starts starts to get a bit a bit big but good 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 so uh let me let me oh, betsy i'm sorry could, could you want to say a little bit more about yourself please no I'm, no I'm no i don't no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all this is betsy brown and that's she right is, and, she... I, and i'll you'll get a lot of emails from me and i'll try to help you in every way that i can to get <laughs> your applications in and all that yes. stuff it, it shouldn't be that challenging i've, I've started some great notes. Some notes here, great yeah. notes, yeah. Help. Well, give you a quick thumbnail of what the program, what, what it's all about, where we are, and why I think seriously it is not only worth the money, that it is a private program, so it unfortunately costs, we do have funding for it, but then I also think besides it being the best study abroad program in Moscow, why I think it really is such a perfect setting that we've got for doing this kind of intensive program. So you probably already, in, 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 since you're all in, in some level of introduction or even second year courses, know that Moscow, kind of like Paris, is shaped in these concentric circles and radials that go out of it. And so if you look at this map where you've got the, the center of Moscow here, so the Kremlin runs right along the Moscow River, which snakes through the center. This is looking in the main airport, is up, up, in, up in this region here. Uh, we recently been coming in as much to one of the southeast airports. So she, there are five airports in Moscow. We tend to come in either to Shidimitsiva, which you, you know, if, you, if you're doing live from Russia, you know that that's where, yes, you, you, <laughs> you visited Shidimitsiva airport when our poor sad little Kevin had to find whether that was his bag or not was in Shidimitsiva. We've recently been coming in more frequently to Domodedovo, which is down south. Doesn't really matter. It's, like, it's a huge concentric circle city. And we've got a terrific location. So this being the very center of the city, our, our region is right here. We, uh, this is the Yegavoy region. We are between this stop here, this metro stop, Bieloruski uh, Vagzal here. We are right located there. 
In fact, oh my goodness, that's our address, actually. <laughs> I clicked on the right spot. Vinigradsky Vesimnatsi, that's actually the address of our place. Um, so it's a direct shot. In fact, Betsy and I were just talking that if you're, if you like just to walk in the weather in the summertime tends to be extremely comfortable, that walk from from the university to the to the Kremlin, basically to the center, takes about 25 minutes to do. You know, the nice walk. If you aren't such a walker but just want to get into town fast, you just hop on the metro, which is right there, literally at the, the uh, uh, yellow here. I'm sorry, it's one big yellow Ruski Vakzal, and you train in in about four and a half minutes. So it's really very, very easy to get to the center <coughs> of the city from where we are. So we're in a terrific location, you know, in the center of Moscow, downtown Moscow. By the way, so if I pull us back, that you can see quite how far out there. All of that, that entire region that you see in the circle, that's all Moscow. And we are located right inside that, where you can see where the dot is. That's us inside the center. The city. So it's a terrific, terrific location. Daniel, come on in, come on in. Hey. Good to see you. So I want to <coughs> introduce to you, this is Daniel Ach, who is our study abroad advisor and is charged with the Moscow region as one of his, uh, what would I call it, what is part of your portfolio. Yes. Is that the way to put it? <laughs> Did you have any, any kind of intro words to say to uh, what may, may be again an all-female group? Again. <laughs> no, before there are guys interested, oh, that's there's, there's probably trading off, maybe. Well, I would go. They, they, they <laughs> yeah. I want you to go this time. Yeah, I, I hopefully, go. hopefully, if all goes well, I'll be there this summer as well. Oh, great. Yeah. Sure. I'm, usually, I'm usually there. We couldn't, couldn't get there this past summer. My wife couldn't fly. So. Yeah. so our location couldn't be better. So that's kind of one of the first things. Now, that said, location, location, location is pretty much everything. But... The actual university, that's our, here we go, here we go, that's our place. Misha Rodney University of Moscow. Again, if you've been working with live from Russia, you've, uh, you will, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm trying to think where you are in the course, we're at now early November, so you probably, have you been to the university yet and seen yeah. kind of the inside and all? Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure, so this is where Tanya studies, right? Tanya studentka study Chiskova Fakultieta na Uchitsa Istoriu. What, and she studies in our very own institute here. So when you go, if you have worked with Live from Russia, you will actually be able to walk in the hallowed footsteps of Tanya, <laughs> Kevin, Misha, and all the other folk from there. In fact, if, you're, if you want to be really kind of creepy about it, Kevin is a former student of ours here mm -hmm. and is now um, a graduate student in theater and dance, I want to say. Uh, so still around. Still looks the same, still bearded and so forth. But this is our university. It's quite remarkable in that it's the first private university in, in the new Russia. Founded right after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 91. And it was founded by, yes, George Bush, the senior, the elder, and Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. So this is not like a small project. This was the idea to bring together the United States and Russia in kind of the first educational enterprise of new Russia and it has so been in operation um, before that time it was a lyceum for to be honest the privileged students of children of the high-ranking Russian bureaucrats but since 91 92 it's an international university that houses students both from Russia all over the country and from countries as far away as the United States Australia Asia and so forth so it's kind of a really international environment in the university. And again, if you are playing around a little bit with Mo life from Moscow, life from Russia, you've seen the interior. It's for a, an 18th century building on the outside facade, the interior has all been very much updated recently. Our dormitory, I'm excited about our dormitory. Our dormitory, <coughs> uh, we don't do uh, homestays on purpose because our time is really small. We don't, we're only there for the five weeks. And unfortunately, because Moscow is that big, massive city, when we've tried to do homestays, most residences in Moscow are not in the center of the city. That's all business area. This, the, the apartments are all in the periphery. And so just getting in and out of the city takes about an hour every day out of your, you know, twice a day out of your schedules. And we just didn't want to do that, to be, to be honest. So we decided to, we, we go, we've been going since 2001 with the, uh, the dormitory, which is located literally two minutes from door to door, from the front door of the door to the front door of the university. It's a two minute walk. It was just renovated last summer. It's spectacular. <laughs> it's spectacular, I have to admit. Yeah, yeah, it's, 
it's really nice. In fact, two of the students who returned this year had seen the pictures that had been on, on our uh, international office posting from the years before it, which are, are quite decent. It's actually one of the nicest places I've academic buildings that I know of in Russia, and they just said, it was so much better than the picture, we felt like we didn't belong there. <laughs> it was too nice, they said, to hang up our underwear and things like that, so they thought it was very nice, and indeed, um, it's, it's, they, they did a really, really nice job. You will have your meals taken in, um, in, in residence, two of them. We don't do all three because, truth we found out, truth be told, students rarely ate dinner in. Everyone wanted to be out in the city, so we wound up wasting your money, our money, their money, all, all the money just kind of got wasted and the food got wasted. So we do two meals a day are included. So if you've got, if everyone's got a little kind of flyer brochure, this is a bit rough and ready to the extent that we, we I'll, I'll mention a couple of changes in here, but I'll get, ask, ask Betsy to keep me on track with this. Um, yeah. So there's a little history of the program, which I just went over with you and the courses that we've got. First thing that I want to change are the actual, we, that thing, one thing that is massively in flux that we're trying to get settled is the course numbers for this program. So they had been RE325 twice. Uh, both of those could be taken as elective courses. S between study abroad and our, well, I shouldn't say study abroad, it's the um, uh, course scheduling, course scheduling office and our department it's determined that because the courses are, and they are, offered in Russian, they had to have the RUS number for them. So the current numbers for them, if you want to write them down, it's one lower division course, RUS 319S for second summer session, and an upper division course, RUS 329S, second summer session. So the first number tells you how many credit hours, the second number tells you is it upper or lower division, and then that final suffix tells you which half of the summer is pleased. Yeah. Um, do those count in the RE major? At so all? yes, in two two ways. I'm not. Okay. Because I know those are specific numbers. Yes. That are in the schedule. No, because these are numbers specifically designated to say this is these are courses during the summer abroad. Okay. These are abroad courses. Sorry, courses abroad during the summer, second summer session. So they make they will count either as. The 319S course will be the equivalent of a bridge course that's going to be required for the major between second and third year. So okay. everyone taking the degree in REE has to have that course. And its number now will be... 312L? L will be... No, is that... Wait, yes. So okay. RUS 312L. I think that's correct. So everyone taking that major will need to take the bridge course, and this will check that box. Okay. The second course, the 329S, is an upper division course that can be converted, but we can petition it to be REE 325, okay. which is Russian culture, which is what we call it. So actually call it, its official title is Russian, Contemporary Russian Urban Culture. Okay. How does that sound? Pretty good. It's sexy. I thought it's sexy. Russian culture. Act that could be anywhere. Contemporary Russian urban culture sounds very hip hop. Yeah. yeah. I have the same question for um, international relations. So for IR, what, so would you be looking for REE credit? Probably. Yes. Um, so we've been told we can okay. change the or, or petition the upper division. To one. substitute. Yeah. The, to substitute okay. for three twenty five. Everything. This would be through the the department. Department. Yes. Through through Slavic. Okay. Yeah. 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 We, yes, we we had fun with that last year. Yes, I know. I know. But 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 they're 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 in flux. As you can see, they were originally RE courses in that period. Right. But, but RE courses have to be taught in English, English, which doesn't seem to make sense if you're in Moscow. <laughs> so there there we are. <laughs> there we are. Um, the, what the two courses are really is the 319, the bridge course, is a social linguistics course that's about how to negotiate with the language in, in country. And the 329 course is Russian culture, five different topics that vary from summer to summer depending on what's available. In the, and, and we've listed some of you there on, for you there on the uh, opposite side. We've done everything from visiting uh, uh, one of the local media stations. We've visited a chocolate factory. We visited um, uh, the Rus uh, Mos Mosfian, the Russian motion picture. Uh, agency. We visited one year we got to get into the Duma. I'll see if that's doable again. That was actually one of the best tours we did, but hmm, it, it was tough even that year. So anyway, these are practicum 
for you to use the language in country that you've been working on that week. So the week that you do language of food and uh, eating out, you go to a restaurant. The week that you're working on the language of politics in contemporary Russia, we went to the Duma. You, uh, one week they we worked on lots and lots of heavy concentrated work on verbs of motion and getting around the city and you used you use the, uh, you actually, we did a, a scavenger hunt on the metro. So yeah, we, we will actually get a chance with your instructors to go around town on all these, these trips. So that's, that's how the courses work. In addition to the courses, and I'm gonna stop babbling for a bit and, and talk about what you need to do to go on this wonderful program. Uh, in addition to the courses, there are some great cultural features built in. Uh, travel, a day trip to Yasnaya Palyana, which is the Tolstoy estate. Um, it's about an hour and a half outside the city, so it is a day trip. You go, we, we take, have a bus set for us. You go out, visit Yaste Pagliana, have lunch there, uh, visit this. There's a secondary museum at this estate, and then come home. Uh, a a, a three-day trip to P St. Petersburg that has been done in a couple of different ways. We've been uh, one year, which I hope we can repeat, we did it entirely by river, so we start in Moscow. <coughs> did we do it last year as well? Oh, yay! So we've done it two years from Moscow up the river to St. Petersburg. So you get to stop along the way at some of the little towns on the river as well. It's really cool, and then still have the two days in St. Petersburg after you travel the one, um, the one, uh, the river trip, day trip up the river, and then take a train back, a night train back into into Moscow. So that's really cool. Plus, as you can see. Uh, the, the cost for the program, which runs, the flat cost is about 6000 plus roughly this, unfortunately, is still the old thing. We, the, my wife and I just booked, in fact, for the winter. So even at New Year's rates, which are considerably inflated, round trip is now running, goodness, I just booked it. I'm trying to see what it, I want to say just at 1700, 1800, something like that. I want to say. I, I just booked it. And I, oh, it was for two of us. So, no, that's not yeah. true. It was for two of us. So, no, uh, so uh, about, about a little higher than that. About, I want to say 1200, 1400 okay. for summer. It should be about that. So, for my, 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 for round trip. Yeah. So, the entire, if you count in all UT insurance and the affiliated study fees, the cost of the entire program should run just around, just hopefully, we, I'd like to keep it under 8000 the more of us that go, the cheaper it gets. So tell your friends, tell your colleagues, I don't want to be alone in Russia this summer, come with me. <laughs> it's a great place to spend five weeks. But look, you can see what all that covers on the inside right-hand page. That will cover your visa fees, the five weeks of tuition at Moscow International. You do not pay concurrent UT tuition, yay. That saves us some cost. Five weeks of double occupancy in the dorm, two meals a day in the cafeteria, your personal tutor, and I can't emphasize how much that he, she will help you. You have your own private tutor. Um, in the past, not only do these individuals help you with your homework, they have invited you to come meet the parents, go out to the dacha, go to the beach. Moscow has a beach, it's not what you think. <laughs> but it does have a beach. It's in Gorky Park. It's, it's, it's very sweet, it's not a beach. They lovingly call it Piash, but it's not a beach. <laughs> But let them call it a beach because it's a it's good trip. It's, it's a cultural thing and it's a fun trip. It includes your tutor. It includes a river cruise on the Moscow River to kind of orient you around the city as well as a bus tour around the city for orientation. Tours of the Kremlin Red Square. Tours of the Tritsikovka Art Museum. Uh, the day trip out to the Tolstoy Estate and the three-day river cruise to St. Petersburg, as well as the accommodations in St. Petersburg for the um, for those nights and excursions in in the city as well. Plus, we'll have you have your uh, your own kind of in-house group leader there, John Smith. But his name really is John Smith. It's not. A, it's not. It really is John. John Smith. It really is. He's been doing this for years and years. Uh, After he went on right? this. Yes, he was on a program very much like this on one of the American councils, and now he's been living there and uh, was was married to a Russian for about ten years. I want to say, but he's been there for nearly twenty. Uh, we take we we do operas, plays in the local theaters. Uh, we go, go to a s soccer football match in Dinamo Stadium, which is literally the next metro stop north of us um, from our dormitory. The Moscow Planetarium Film Studios, you can read the rest of these are terrific little outings that we've been able to make on the program. So, I, I'll breathe now. 
interest, I hope, is there based on this. What you need to do if you're interested in applying to go through. We've given you this handy dandy. <laughs> Betsy has done the most amazing yeah. job. And you now can put the face That's to right. the name. Number where one. Number one says <laughs> contact Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. He's our coordinator. His email is, it's a, this is a live link if you need his email. Yeah, I'm going to send it to everybody. Yes. I'm sending this document. That's why you that fill way it out. That way you don't have to email. copy anything. You can just click on the email or give him a call. And he will authorize you into the database system through, through study through abroad. Portal, yeah. So that you will now have your own personal little portal that will have my study abroad. Click on it and it will take you right to our program. Uh, so that's the first step. You go to that study abroad page. There's number two, how to set up your My SAO, My Study Abroad, um, and with your EID. And get the information such as our, our program quote code, which we've given you there. For, that tells you it's second summer session of 2017. What else does it? What else do they yeah, need to fill anything in? Anything else to get to, to get through the portal that part? Is there anything else? Bit. That's pretty much all you need. That that's looks good. Um, you will uh, you will need to input um, the language that you're taking. Yeah, that's right. But it's, yeah, it's <laughs> Russian, by the way. Russian <laughs> and the code. It's, it's Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So once you've done that, this is the only part that you are kind of obligation that is non-refundable here. We, when you apply, you'll be charged on your fee bill a $75 application fee. And that is the only not kind of, uh, short of, of backing out the day before we leave, we can't mm -hmm. give you your money back then. But otherwise, we try to kind of roll into the cost of the program uh, dates in which you pay parts of the, of, the, of the fee. This is the only one that's non-refundable, the $75. Now, this is a new step, six, so take note of this. Because of, between the situation in Syria, I hate to say, as well as the sanctions imposed by the United States and the European Union over the last two years, um, Russia is now a, a restricted travel region. And we don't want to make any qualms about that. We want to be honest to you and to your parents. That requires one additional step. It's filling out. Do we have a sample of it? It's a two-page form. The second page, which is fairly chunky, but we want to give you a template of uh, to show you what you. Does that make sense? Give that, them a template. template. To give them a template, say these. They did are, all the work for you. So we we <laughs> kind of no want to be able to say here are the kind. Well, because it asks for things like an itinerary, it asks for. So we want to give you. We know yeah. what all that. So we'll give you the itinerary. We'll give you all the bits the of address you need for where you're going to stay. Right. Yeah. All the things like the address of the university and so forth. We'll, we'll provide you. So that, I'll email you that as yes. well. But you do need to go in to, and fill in that first part of it on your own that has your personal information. And then as you see, as you go down, you do need to get two letters of recommendations. One should be from your current Russian instructor. The other can be from any other instructor you have that might say, Hey, she's a nice person. Hey, I know she won't cause riots. She won't go protesting against the Putin government while she's there. We want all those things just to be sure you're okay. And those get emailed directly back to us, in, uh, to Betsy or to me. Yeah. TLC. TLC, yeah. Texas Language Center. Yeah. Uh, does it have to be a professor? As opposed like an, to... Like say an employer? No, an employer would be fine. Okay. For, for, for the so other one. Russian so one from your instructor okay. and then one from an employer. That would be fine. Yeah, that'd be fun. Someone who can, this is in Russian what is called haritiristiki, someone who can vouch for your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, she's not only nice, dependable, dependable, reliable, a, yeah, an upstanding citizen. Gotcha. There you go. Thank you. And now the big, biggie, biggie is the last one here. Yo, you, I'm sorry, I'll bet you'll write a couple of paragraphs. Yes, yeah, a couple of paragraphs. You already just told us, so just put it down on the uh, Exactly. And email. TLC, that why, why it is that you need to be in Moscow in this intensive environment and so forth for five weeks. And the last part, if you do not have a passport, does anyone not have a passport yet? Okay, so start that process right away because you want your passport to be valid at least, a, to, to have an, a valid date. So those of you who already have them, check to make sure your passport is valid. One and a half years, 18 months after our program ends, which is August of 2017. So your passport must be valid until 2019, mm -hmm. 2019. How long does it usually last? 10 long? years. Oh, okay. They're so, 10 yeah. years. Uh, yeah, if you, so if you've gotten them within the last seven and a half years, you're good. 
you're good to go. So why does it have to be valid through a year and a half? Just this curious. is a, a Russian thing. Oh. Uh, they, they, it, it has a lot to do for, well, I'm, I'm going to give you a short example here. I just got my three-year visa approved, so I now have been clear to travel for three years. I had to submit my mortgage payment stuff. <laughs> I had to submit my ownership of our um, home, like right? how much I we own the home, my uh, employer's salary records for me over the last year. They want to make sure two things, that I am gainfully employed in the U.S. so that I will not seek gainful employment in Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are all things to say you will be returning to the U.S., right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's all about. And then that's this time they said you could possibly yes. extend, extend it. As far as. So your passport needs to be good in case, for example, you suddenly you're there and you say, wow, I'm in love with this place. I think I'm going to do mm -hmm. academic year 17, 18 in Moscow. Mm -hmm. I'm enrolling in our wonderful university there. Please let your parents know before <laughs> before you do this, by the way, guys. Seriously, don't, don't let me be the one who gets the message from no mom and dad. No falling in love with someone yeah, and deciding yeah. to move yeah. to Moscow. But that's, that's really why they want it. I'm serious. They, they want you to have that, that pad of a year and a half, like 18 months. Yeah. So just check if you have. So if you haven't done, by the way, uh, the international office does all the processing now. It's kind of cool. We have it all right on campus. Just go in there. You uh, take in your photographs, fill out the form, and it goes all here through UT. If you start that process this month, you could probably get your passport without having to expedite it by the time. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's actually that's a really good point. You have to pay the extra ex expedition fee because it, 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 expediting it does cost a good good bit. You don't don't pay that. Yeah. So do yes do make sure that your pass it says have your passport valid through March of 2019. Yeah. Questions, comments, any of that, anything. The point of this earlyish meeting besides trying to get some interest up, so you go back to your classes and say, we're going to Moscow this summer and everyone should go, everyone should do this, which I hope you do do, is to give you enough time in November so that if you are going back to parents or persons responsible for you over Thanksgiving, you can talk about this. And you know in advance what's at stake, what costs are, and indeed, re re regarding cost, because we know it's not a cheap program. It's also by far not the most expensive summer program. Uh, not big, good value. It Definitely. is good value for the Very money, I assure you. That. Study abroad. There are good scholarship options, which are also given in the second part. And they're of the very well, maybe more. Yes. <laughs> These are the ones that we do know of. So the FLAS, Foreign Language Area Scholarships, are available through the Slavic Department. What you will have to do for that, though, is you will um, we have to make sure that you get the equivalent of a full, not just s double course, but a third course. So you would um, work with me in first summer session to do a kind of pre-departure course to go to this one and get FLAS qualification. You have to have, uh, I think ours counts for 10 hours of total, uh, even though you're getting 